you're supposed to be up for it all the time and like, you know, here I was freaking out every time I was next to my girlfriend, basically. Dating, falling in love, can be great, but it can also be tricky, messy and awkward. And what if you have that constant worry of, when do I tell them about... It was starting to become quite noticeable, um, so I felt it was important to, to bring it up with you. More than one in three people with a mental illness feel stigma stops them having a relationship. And when should you bring it up? What's the right time? Now? Now? Now. Now? now? I've had a couple of partners who, um, they must have just thought I was a bit of a lot of the time. When you don't have an outlet, you get angry and, like, you know, frustrated. But since having the diagnosis, I've been very open. And, of course, what's going on in your mind can get in the way of things in the bedroom. But what we've got to dispel a little bit here is that people with um, any any kind of anxiety disorder it doesn't mean that they're not sexual, you know. And I think, yeah, this is what, they do have sex. They do have, they have sex. good sex. Yeah, yeah, and they can enjoy it. <laughs> I hope that's not what they're I bet doing. They're at it. Yes, yeah. I just, I just, <laughs> So from first dates to sex, how can we talk about our mental health? This week on Like Minds, we're finding out when and how to bring up what's really going on in your mind. Maybe I'll see a couple walking down the street and I'll think, why don't you just go and punch the guy in the face? This is Josh. He has anxiety and he lives with and manages intrusive thoughts all the time. That would make me feel incredibly shameful and horrible. Intrusive thoughts are a big part of lots of mental illnesses, including anxiety disorders like OCD. But what are they? Over to these guys. My intrusive thoughts can come at any time. In OCD, they take a slightly different form. My intrusive thoughts are mostly based around the idea that I'll either do something horrible to someone else or something horrible to myself. We obsess about them, we ruminate about them because they feel so real. Josh has a girlfriend who supports him and who he talks to. But his anxiety has made dating tricky in the past. One intrusive thought that's plagued Josh in most areas of his life is the feeling that he's about to wet himself. Wetting yourself in the middle of a meeting or on the tube, that was the worst thing that my anxiety-stricken brain could come up with, basically. That's amazing, you know? though, you can have, like, that strength of thought. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing, and it would make me feel, like, physically like it was going to happen. Josh doesn't ever wet himself, and his intrusive thoughts haven't stopped him dating. Josh, 28, tall, light and acceptable, love long walks, lols, and the ability not to freak out when I get worried I might piss myself. So when I was using Tinder and online dating um, before I met my current partner, you'd sort of get a grasp of where that person was emotionally quite quickly, I guess, and you meet them and you can sort of tell whether that person knows about mental health issues or, or not. Like, you know, some people use the words insane or crazy or OCD. Well, this isn't going to go to another date, so I'm not going to tell this person, going to have a drink, fake a phone call, and then, and then leave, basically. Is that your tactic? <laughs> now the world no. knows. <laughs> have you had sex with anybody who doesn't know about your anxiety? No. <laughs> no. If you don't feel like you can trust them with talking about something that is very, very embedded into your identity, then I don't see how you can think about having a physical relationship. We, we have got a lot of sexualized behaviours and a lot of sexual images around us, and yet when it comes to the individual and or the couple, I never ever cease to be amazed at how difficult it is for some of them to talk about it. This is Denise. She's a sex and relationship therapist and she lives here. This is the room that I do my therapising in. Therapising, like that. Yeah. yeah. It's not got posters of willies <laughs> or like, <laughs> no sex in here. I, I, I put the blow-up doll away for the day, you know. <laughs> what is sex therapy? Well, we have to be careful about what we say about sex therapy because there are many prostitutes that will refer to themselves as sex therapists. Really? I am not one of they. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Listen to us. Clocked. But what I am witnessing is people actually getting to the sexual part of the relationship much, much quicker and before perhaps they've even got to know the person. So if I don't know the person, how comfortable might I be about sharing a mental health issue? If you were going to give Denise Knowles' top points of advice <laughs> for coming into a relationship, a sexual relationship, 
when you have anxiety, what would you say? Please try and understand what your anxiety is about, OK? You may not know, and that in itself needs to be, be shared. And I think once you kind of understand yourself a little bit, it makes sharing that much easier. Meet the other India. She has OCD, and like Josh, she has intrusive thoughts. A short, blonde-haired student who likes running but is liable to stress because her brain doesn't know how to switch off. And this is her boyfriend, Teo. They talked to us about their love life. Obviously, I could tell that something she was anxious about something, but I could also tell that the fact that she wasn't talking to me about it meant that at the time she wasn't comfortable. My behaviour wasn't changing, I just kept avoiding it. So in the end, I think we, we, we sat down and I said, look, you know, I've got OCD and it was clearly an issue, but I, yeah, I didn't know how to bring it up. Um, but once I had brought it up, I felt a huge sign of, a sense of relief myself because then it, Tia at least understood where I was coming from. But yeah, it wasn't easy. <laughs> As Josh and India have told us, dating, sex and your mental health can be hard to talk about. But here are some tips from those guys to help you. If you, if you have a mental health problem, then it does something that you should share with others and shouldn't be kept yourself. You know, you get in there and you think, this isn't going to be a long-term thing, then I wouldn't even bother mentioning it. If you're going to have sex two or three dates in, maybe you have to say something beforehand. But if you think, oh, this could really go somewhere, then I'd probably tell them early. Giving, giving you time and not pressuring you. When you trust someone enough and you feel comfortable, of them, I think that's generally the kind of the right sort of time to do it. If you don't say anything, it could spoil an otherwise potentially good relationship. So tell us, when and how can we discuss mental health when we're seeing somebody new? We want all of your brilliant advice. We know you've got it. Back to Josh, because now we're moving things into the bedroom. If there's one thing that's worse than wetting yourself in a meeting, it's wetting yourself when you're trying to have sex with someone. Whenever I got in a situation where I was about to sleep with someone or, you know, I went home with someone. Oh, it's like perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> we entered the mood lighting period. <laughs> For me, in this relationship, I was kind of consumed with the thought that I might get pregnant and this was a real concern for me um, initially and I was just convinced that it would happen. This was completely like I need to not even be in this bed with you and maybe we shouldn't even try and do it like the rest of the day maybe even the whole week or whatever. It's just about sort of saying okay can we take a breather. Sex is an ongoing conversation do you know what I mean even throughout the act and making adjustments throughout is it makes it a lot better and part of that is you know, dealing with anxiety as it comes up. People need to be touched. They want to be touched. We grow through touch. We feel connected through touch. And people with mental ill health will have good sex lives. The major prerequisite for having any form of like physical relationship is trust. It's over to you. Have you got advice up your sleeve? Let us know and we'll share it. Because you never know, it might just help another mind like your mind. <laughs> <laughs>